Hello, you're listening to Shorthand, a guide to making a short film, a BFI network and Film Hub Southeast podcast. Whether you're actively making a short film or passively thinking about it, this is a podcast designed to help you on the journey from coming up with a compelling short film idea to editing it into a finished product. Applications for the BFI Network Short Film Fund are now open, so there's no better time to dive into our archive of previous episodes on all aspects of the short filmmaking process. In this final episode, we're getting into the edit and chatting to short film editors and a filmmaker about how they cut their darlings. When I was an assistant editor, short films were passed to me through the editors I was working with. So at that time, I was so lucky to meet so many lovely up and coming directors and producers. So it was through the editors that I got the short films. And then I also continued to edit short films alongside the features I'm editing, because I love the challenge of editing a compact and interesting story within 10 to 20 minutes. That's Biffa nominated film editor Rebecca Lloyd, whose credits include Andrea Arnold's recent documentary Cow and independent features like Herself and The Power. She's also worked consistently on short films, and next you'll hear her discuss how she decides which short film projects to work on. At the very beginning, I never said no to a short film and always said yes. It's all about meeting new people, growing with them, and in the hope that when they've got their feature, that you'll build that friendship and that relationship and that understanding. So then I suppose most recently, short films have come to me through word of mouth or people who have worked with in the past or like who've Googled and like my body worked and have reached out to me that way. And a couple of short films have come to me through my agent. How I went about and what stage I got my agent was it was a night of the ceremony when I was selected as one of the 18 BAFTA Breakthrough Brits in 2016 for my additional editing on American Honey. I started to think about agents around that time and editors I'd worked with were with Casa Rotto, so they were like my first choice, but I approached them and they weren't looking for any new editors. But at that ceremony, it was just incredible. They approached and asked to represent me and that was just so exciting and a, a big pivotal moment in my career. When a short film project comes to me, I do base my decision on my initial first reaction to the script. I've read many feature film scripts and short film scripts now in the last 13 years. And I like to think that I can see, I can sense its rhythm and how the story is going to flow and how it makes me feel at the end. I also base working on a short film um, with my first meeting with a director, because you always know, like at that meeting, if you click and if you're on the same page and, and if it'll be a nice short film journey together. I actually had a, a Zoom meeting with a short film director yesterday. Her script came my way and I just loved the story. And her storytelling technique was to tell it all through POVs and reflections and in a non-linear way, in a very surreal, visceral, with lots of sound design. And that to me, from my from being an artist, I've, I've always been drawn to very art house film. And then meeting her on Zoom, I was just like, yep, yeah, you know, it's, it, was a, it was a micro budget. Um, and I'd let her know that I'd be doing it at weekends. I'm excited to to work on it because it just it just seems like a very important and interesting story to tell visually. So that is another reason why I chose that one. And also, if I'm too busy at the time, um, but love the script, if I've got an, an assistant editor who I know is brilliant, I always recommend them to edit it and then I supervise. And that's like another nice way of just passing it down. In the following segment, Rebecca discusses how the director's vision guides her editing process and why it always comes back to instinct and emotional response. I've worked on many different genres of short films and feature films from romance, comedy, action, horror. Really, in the end, I always tailor my way of working to the vision of the director and also what footage is shot and what's in front of me. Sometimes it's like the script is jumping off the page and other times we have to throw away the scripts out the window and just rewrite. I I do have in-depth conversations about what the director's vision is, the atmosphere and the tension they're aiming for in the scene and what moments and the performances they like best. And then I go away and edit it alone. I don't know whether I have a personal style, but I, I know I trust my instincts, my emotional response to the footage, and that my internal rhythm influences the final film. I used to be a dancer, and I feel editing is like creating a well-choreographed dance. I also tend not to cut for the sake of cutting. 
A great demonstration of this is my, uh, working with Dominic Savage on his TV series, I Am Kirsty, and with Andrew Arnold on Cow. It was just staying with the moment um, and keeping authentic. But also I listen and I'm with the director and their vision and, and directors come with, they do come with their own style and I respect that and I will always tailor my editing to suit their vision. It is it is reacting to the, the footage and the feeling. And if it's not working, you just know and you just rework and rework until the, the director says that's that's what I want from it. Like every genre has its own pace and rhythm and every genre faces its different problems. But at the end of the day, it is all about your gut and your feelings and stepping back. And if it's making you laugh, making you cry, like for me, when I'm, I'm editing, like I've been told I'm a very emotional editor and in, in the sense of having emotional intelligence, if I'm, if I'm not crying, if I'm not laughing, if I'm not scared, you know, then it, then it isn't working. And then I just feel like I'm the, I'm the first audience and I keep on working on it until I, I get that reaction. Next, Rebecca reveals how her editing process works on a more logistical level and also what it is she's doing, i.e. not just cutting to make the film shorter, but to get to the heart of what the film is trying to say and offers her advice for if and when you get stuck. So usually with short films that I've edited, I get all the rushes at once and I like to get the first assembly to the director as quickly as I can. And I follow the script in the order, um, including all the dialogue, to preserve everything that they have shot and the overall structure. I love this reveal, unlike the director, who finds it terrifying. As with the first assembly, you can see obvious things immediately and the fun can begin sculpting and chipping away at the scene's beginnings and the endings, having conversations about how we can tell the story in the most compact and economical way. Once the director has got the assembly, we work on eliminating dialogue as sometimes visually it has already been said or adding time to be with the character, establish their emotional journey and for the audience to care and believe. It's nice getting all the rushes at once because I can start at the beginning and work my way through. And sometimes I edit half and send it to the director for feedback while I'm working on the second half. Sometimes a way the scene has been shot organically dictates how it is sculpted together. Or sometimes the scene has to be manipulated and massaged to get to the heart of what the scene's about. This is one example of a short film I edited early on in my career. Um, the director was worried about the coverage and the performance was not as strong as they had hoped for. Um, so we had so many different versions with different openings, different endings, dialogue on reactions, uh, creating new completely scenes out of all the rushes that we had, even before take and after take. Um, and we worked and worked, reworked, finding solutions that told the story the best way we had with the footage. I love that moment I have with the rushes and that first assembly. But for me, it's it's when you can see the, the film as a whole and just that dialogue and back and forth. Because quite a lot of the time um, I'm working remotely on short films or on the weekend and then I send a cut and then I get feedback in the week and then I work on the weekend. So it's it kind of like works that way. Um, and then it's lovely that they come in, we sit together and we do get the chance to look through the performances, picking out moments that the director loves and then kind of like basing the scene around that and trying to find the best route to that moment and out of it. Like I, I always love that assembly time as well because it is my my first moment with the rushes. You really get like you've, you've read the script, you've had the discussions with the director before, what their vision is and what they want from it tonally. I've, I've, I always ask them what films they would recommend me to watch to help me gauge pace or style or tone or it's a lovely dance. If you're stuck um, on anything, it's usually because like you've been making a thousand decisions and choices in your mind and your brain's just run out of that capacity um so always it's always great just to walk away or move on to a next scene or even just you know sleep on it because sometimes solutions can come to you in your dreams and it, like every cut having a purpose to drive the story forward it's all about kind of what's what is serving the story best to get to the you know the, the character's emotional journey so yeah, all the way through, just fine tuning and shaping the performances and just, yeah, making sure it flows until you work out where that block is. And a lot of the times it's like removing a scene completely. Always trust your instincts, your gut feelings.
Ami and I met at film school at the National Film and Television School. It's two years. So the first year we're sort of working on small projects, getting like they pair us up with uh, different directors, editors, uh, just to kind of see, uh, you know, how people, you know, how people get along and stuff. So we kind of got a chance to see each other's work then, I think. And um, yeah, I was just always really impressed with uh, Ami's work and her sort of work ethic. And everyone who worked with her said great things. So I really wanted, uh, I thought it would be a good thing if we could work together for a grad film. That's Renee Zahn, an award-winning animator and director known for her short films O Black Hole, Soft Animals and Rene Poptosis, which won the short film jury prize at Sundance in 2019. Renee is joined by her regular collaborator and editor, Armie Arapim. Here they talk about meeting at NFTS and how they decided to work together, and then how they established creative compatibility when it came to making a short film. Usually we were paired up, so you don't really get a choice in who you want to work with except for the grad. So it was quite a big deal. And I knew that it would take up most of my year. So it had to be like, it had for me, it had to fulfill two conditions. Like I had to like the person and I had to really be into the story that we were trying to make. And with Renee, because our previous works, actually it was Soft Animals, a film that Renee had directed that's actually making this festival circuit rounds right now. I saw that in our first year and I immediately went, okay, I have to work with this person. Like, no matter what, I have to work with this person. So yeah, like a combination of the story and the person, I think, draws me to the projects that I do. At the beginning of the process, it's a bit like, we said it's a bit like dating or it's a bit like prom, you know, where everyone's kind of, because there's eight of every group. So there's eight directors, eight producers, eight editors. So everyone's, it's kind of this mad scramble to sort of have conversations, kind of figure out what feels right. So yeah, I remember uh, Ami and I had just a nice chat where we talked about films and films we liked and didn't like. And I remember (laughs) the moment that I was, that I thought, yeah, 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 this is, this is great. Was we were talking about birds and um, just how much we liked birds. (laughs) I think it's something that kind of guides me with editing as well, because you have a list of logical things, but at, at the end of the day, it's also quite instinctive. Like there's only so much logic and then you start to just understand, like, okay, I understand this person. I know what she she's all about. But I guess if you don't know someone, that very first meeting is really important because you, you kind of have to know why do you want to tell this story? What draws them to it? And I think editors kind of have to learn to get into the minds of the directors because sometimes things are quite hard to articulate. You know, not everything is easily expressed. I think over time as well, like when I'm suggesting something to Renee, I kind of know if she's going to say, no, that's bad. Or, or like, oh, that's cool, you know. But I think it's something that also happens with time. Or if you're really lucky, some people just like get on immediately. And specifically for this animation, Oh Black Hole, because we didn't really have like a proper set in stone kind of script. So it meant that like there was a lot of collaboration, you know. It wasn't it wasn't like I was just, okay, Renee, you want to do this, let's do this. It was a lot of like, but why do you want to do this? Is that a good idea? Is that a bad idea? So I guess if you're working with someone that you can always have good, long great conversations with I think that will lead to like the ideas and the decisions that you make in the edit. Next up Ami and Renee talk about how they actually communicate during the editing phase and the particular challenges inherent to editing an animated short film and how figuring out what the short film is going to be is really about the story which is a good time to point you in the direction of episode one where we explore how to refine the story you're telling. So I would love to have Renee with me the whole day in the suite, but because Oh Black Hole, she was really busy animating as well. <laughs> so she didn't really have that much time. I mean, if I really needed her to be there, we would spend a couple of hours together. But what we did, I think like a 16 minute animation film in the space of a year, it was really ambitious. So a lot of time, Renee was just sort of like madly animating in her tiny room. But you know, again, I would just say, hey, I just need you here to look at something. She would say, okay, cool, I'll be there and like, half an hour or something. But I don't know what you feel about that, Renee. Would you prefer to be in the editing suite or out of it? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I've never, I haven't had the experience yet of sort of being in the editing suite all day. I definitely would have preferred to have been done animating. (laughs) But yeah, I think what Ami was saying in a very kind way earlier was that it was a mess. I was, it was a mess. The film was a mess. The, you know, the process was a bit of a mess. And editing is kind of this like final chance to to make it all make sense which is why I love it so much 
So yeah, it was a really enjoyable process, and I feel like I really learned a lot. It was also very, I would say, ed uh, editing down an animation is very tricky because uh, because I was like just animating those shots, and then I would come downstairs, and you know, if Ami said like, "Oh, we could just maybe let's just take the last half of this shot," and I was like, "No, <laughs> that took me. That was eight hours <laughs> of, of you know that I just spent. Where where will it go? No one will see it." But I think. It's important to let go of the, you know, to kind of separate yourself from being the animator and then going into the edit suite and then looking at the film as a whole and do, making decisions for the good of the film. Yeah, because I feel like with animation, especially because Renee is animating uh, as well as directing, she's so close to the material that I sort of feel really like a lot of empathy for her because it is like you get really precious about things, you know, and that's not bad or good it's just like it is what it is so I always try to remind myself like it's actually really painful for someone to like what Renee was saying it's painful to make those decisions so when I do it I really approach it gently and sometimes if she's not up for it I, I won't push it I'll be like hey this is what I feel but if you disagree it's all right maybe then I will try to revisit it again <laughs> at a later time <laughs> just because I feel like some, you know it's like she spent eight hours animating it's tiring and then she comes to my room and then you know sometimes like uh, there's only so much bad news or so much I don't know intensity that someone can take in a day so like pick your battles I guess yeah it's really it's really hard to do that especially in the middle of production or near the end of production because you've just been sort of so deep in it but yeah I think like getting other opinions is really is kind of the best way to do it I think at the film school that that was kind of a great positive of the film school as well as a kind of a negative that there were so many opinions coming in every day from tutors from other classmates like we would just have these big reviews you know every like couple of weeks having those opinions is really good but having too many I think is also starts to just feel like I don't know like noise like it's hard to than to stay true to what it is, you know, that we were trying to make in the first place. So yeah, it's just, it's a really tricky balance, I think. I think like it's from the very beginning, I'm always, I'm always curious about the story. Like what, why, why are we telling this story? What is it about? And with the film that I'm making with Renee right now, there's a script. I just feel like when I'm reading the script, I like to really analyze why, 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 what's this doing here? What, what's the characterization of this person so I feel like whenever I don't understand something it's okay I just have to keep asking Renee what are you intending and not everything makes it into the film I think but I feel like we need to know what we're trying to say so again that's the sort of the logical part of it where you ask all these like basic questions but I feel like at some point if you're too logical as well it's really boring and sometimes it's okay if you don't understand something you know like it's okay for example, we were having some, quite a few feedback sessions in the school where literally people were like, I have no idea what this film is. I have no idea what you guys are trying to do. And, of, and it's hard to hear that when you've been working on it for months, you know? But then we have to decide like, no, we know what this story is and maybe this isn't for everyone. And it's okay if someone doesn't understand everything. But as long as it's like emotionally honest, I think that's a good way to, to think about it. Plot is just sort of like the trimmings and everything. But I think if, you, you're, if you're affected by things that make you feel something. So if you're like cutting for emotional clarity, maybe that helps. Yeah, there was a lot of that of people saying, I have no idea what's happening. And it's quite a sort of old school, traditional place. So I think that was why we were getting a lot of that. But I think the first time that we showed it to someone, it was Astrid and Emily, our friends. Uh, who are in the directing fiction course there. And they were, they seemed so sort of emotional, you know, after seeing it. And that kind of was, it was like, okay, that's, that's great. That's, you know, that's, that's amazing that somebody can watch it and feel something, even if they don't really get every sort of twist and turn. Finally, Renee and Ami share what they've learned from editing their short film so far, as well as what advice they would give to filmmakers currently going through that process. I think each film is such a huge learning experience. A Black Hole probably the most so. And yeah, I'm developing this film now uh, with BBC Films. And it's a live action film. Yeah, we're, we have a script this time, which is really good. And I think I, I, it's more important to me with this one that um, it sort of logically makes sense and, and that people sort of are with it the whole time. It's been really good, like even at the script stage. I've just yesterday, Ami and I had a like session where we sort of looked through it because it's really, yeah, it's really helpful just to see it from, from her point of view and, and to look at it with, uh, with someone else.
I don't know if this is like a common thing, but I'm quite harsh on myself. So it's quite hard for me to look back, like literally watch the things that I've done um, because I'm scared that I will watch it and I go, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. It kind of ruined it forever. And also like with Old Black Hole, it was like a, like an intense time. And then we graduated into a pandemic. So I feel like a lot has happened and maybe I haven't quite unpacked everything. It's more of like, I think I know Renee better now, you know? So we are building on a relationship that we already have. And what I like to do actually is like with every film I do, even when if even if the, the director is not Renee, I think every film has its own logic or its own set of rules and its own grammar. So I'm, I'm not really into like, oh yeah, my rule is you should always do this or you should always do that. I just feel like with every story, you kind of develop, develop something together when you're making it. I feel like every film is its own world. Um, and I'm sure there's some like tenets, but most of the time I like to be inspired by what the story is. And also like uh, trust your team, you know? I think it's quite hard to make a film alone. So if you have a good team with you, trust that everybody's kind of in it. I mean, I think everybody wants the best for the film. I guess the biggest piece of advice, which I don't really follow myself, is that the film can always be shorter. You probably don't need that shot that, uh, you know, you're hanging on to. And and yeah, trust your editor and trust that having different other people are seeing something that you, you can't because uh, you're sort of so, so deep in the middle of it. Yeah, I'd say trust your editor and also trust your own voice and just don't forget like why it is that you set out to make the film in the first place. You know, I like to be involved before the shoot, if possible. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll meet the director. After reading the script, I'll meet the director and we'll have conversations about what the story is that they're trying to say and, I guess, thematically what it's trying to accomplish um, and what they hope you know, the audience will take away by the end of the film. And then, so, so trying to get, get inside the director's head as much as possible, really. Um, because all of that stuff is really useful fodder when I'm, when I'm editing. Uh, when I start the edit, I'm mostly going off the conversations, but I end up in the script. Uh, is really useful, obviously, <laughs> as a kind of main um, backbone of the film, and that's that's what I'm trying to put together, and references as well. But I think mostly it's those conversations. That's Entha Marion Kemi, an editor and Screen Daily star of Tomorrow, known for his work on features such as Ear for Eye and Blue Story, as well as this year's winner of the Biffa Award for Best Short Film, Femme, alongside a plethora of short films such as Dawn in the Dark, Something in the Closet, The Devil's Harmony, and Night Bus. Here, he discusses how and when he gets involved in projects, his technical process, how he works with directors, and why the most important thing in the edit is simplifying. So on a technical level, I'm going off of you know, continuity report and you know those kinds of things and camera sheets and everything, but usually that's kind of more trying to get me out of trouble if I realise I'm missing something or something's not coming together. Uh, so I guess like creatively, it's mostly going off of, at first, at least my instincts and, and the script and those conversations I've had with the director. Firstly, there's, there's all the technical side of like organising the rushes um, and setting up my project. And I like to be quite detailed and meticulous in that because it becomes really useful down the line, you know, when you're sitting with the director and starting to go, hey, is there another version of that? What else will be film on that day? And, and so I can have that all clearly labelled so I can go back and pull that up. So I spend a lot of time doing that. And then I'll organise all the rushes in terms of, uh, you know, by scene and, by, and then by shot. And then I'll, I'll start watching through all of that stuff and sort of make my own notes on what I think is, is uh, uh, you know, really useful and all the, the best take, et cetera. Um, and then I'll start cutting that together, usually in, in chronological order, um, if I'm starting after the scene. So I guess a first, first, a first part of, of the full film that's essentially going to be as close as possible to the script and trying to, trying to use my, my, my instincts and my knowledge of what the director wants try and put together that that version of the film yeah i think it totally depends on the director that i'm working with and on the stage and the and the editing process how how closely they are you know how much time they're spending with me um at the beginning i guess it, i mean it kind of depends on the project as well but uh so on a, on a feature production i'm starting to assemble during the shoot so obviously they're not with me at all and maybe we'll check in every day or every other day and I can let them know how it's going and how it's cutting together and then usually I'll have like two weeks say on feature I'll have two weeks after the shoot where I'm sort of finishing to put together that first assembly uh, and then the director after that point the director will come in and we'll spend you know days maybe weeks together 
crafting the second cut of the film, so which will be I think it's normally referred to as a director's cut, where we're trying to you know, help create what the director imagines to be the best version of the film. Um, and so hopefully my assembly is like at least 70% there, but then it's like trying to get it back to 30 percent and we'll go back and we'll go through everything. We'll go through every shot, every, every take and sort of try and see if we can find a better performance or try to find a new way of imagining it. And that'll also mean taking stuff away as well. I think that's really important to say as part of the editing process. A lot of it is kind of simplifying or reducing and trying to find the most efficient way of telling the story. Next, Anthemary emphasises why concision is key and how he communicates with the filmmakers he's working with to encourage that concision. I think it's important to remember the value, I guess, of the editor and that they have a fresh pair of eyes and can see it, um, are seeing it differently from the way the director is seeing it. And, you know, the director has been sitting on the project for, you know, months or maybe maybe even years, uh, whereas the editor is coming on with sort of fresh eyes and can go, oh, actually, all, all this, you know, the story's uh, really interesting, but, you know, maybe it might be even more interesting if you take away this element of it or whether you could tell, maybe you tell the story in, in, a, in a simpler way. And I think it's really useful to sort of, it's really important to value that, I guess. Value that, value that first perspective. I guess it's also, you know, sharing it to other people and getting other people's opinion on it and kind of being able to gauge from that what is working and what isn't working. Um, you know, I think there's that, that, that common expression of, you know, short films are either too long, much too long, or far, far too long, um, which in my experience is always the case. There's, there's always a, a sort of more concise way of telling the story. It can even be, you know, it can be the best story in the world, but it's there's, it's going to be better if it was slightly shorter. And also you just have a better chance at you know, festivals and awards and all that kind of thing. I mean, those conversations happen all the time. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you reduce things? How do you make things sort of more punchier and more concise? I remember on a film I worked on uh, called Blue Story, the, you know, the first cut was probably at least like two and a half hours, I think, and the final film is maybe just shy of 90 minutes. And so there was a lot of stuff that we took out of the film. A learning experience for me because the I'd had, I'd had previous experience in film, but the director um, it was his first time making a feature film. And so I was doing a lot of like the sort of helping, helping show him how to navigate, I guess, that world and you know, with execs and handling feedback and all that kind of thing. And actually, he was really happy with that first assembly, which was like the two and a half hour version. So I was like trying to work out, like, you know, how do you talk? This is Rat, Ratman. How do I talk him into? In, into seeing that you know, there is a more concise version. Uh, um, and I think, I mean, I think he trusted me, which I think is like the most important thing. You know, really a uh, great thing for a director to have to do with their editor is, is sort of value their opinion and value you know, their input. And, you know, I, I, I cut lots of conversions together. I, I sort of showed him, you know, this is a way of getting this particular sequence more concise. For example, of our opening, it's kind of following these two boys and their sort of relationship. Uh, but at the film, the original version of the film in the script started off with them so growing up together, you sort of see the, I think them when they're like in primary school and then growing up together in secondary school. But the film kind of doesn't really start until they're in secondary school. So there's kind of like a first, I think probably like 20 minutes of, of just them growing up together. And it was really nice, um, but it didn't move the story forward in any way. So I sort of went away. Well, he went away and left me for a bit and I sort of tried to work out, you know, is there kind of a, a sort of more montage version that's kind of, that's a lot more concise, but still still keeps sort of um, the main story points that you need to know when you do then cut. And then, yeah, so then we did that and then I showed him that and he was sort of basically gave the thumbs up and we sort of, you know, tweaked and finessed that, but that, that then ended up being the opening of the film. Finally, Enthemary talks about honing his editorial instincts, keeping emotions at the forefront of the film and why performances are key to a good edit. I guess for me, it's always story and character first for the sort of tropes of genre, I guess, come into it. I think it's about like, evaluating the material that you have in front of you and going, well, what is the best version of this specific film and trying to, and trying to help the film, it sounds like pretentious, but trying to allow the film to tell you what it wants to be, what it, want, you know, what it, what it needs to be. And, and trying, yeah, trying, trying to really sort of get the best version of the characters and the best version of the story. And then it's like looking at it and going, okay, well, this needs to feel like an action film. How do we, do we need to cut faster? Do we need to spend more time in this moment? Do we need to spend more time on the action sequences? I think for me, it's quite primarily about the story and the character. Clarity, rhythm and subtext are definitely all key, key pillars for me when I'm cutting. I think, I think, I think it's also emotion and, and the, you know, the emotion of the characters and does it feel true and does it feel true for the moment that they're going through? And um, is there a through line with that, you know, through the film? Does it feel like that, that you can follow that as an audience? 
and also I guess the emotion of the audience and what are they thinking and feeling throughout the film and trying to keep that in mind trying to keep that at the forefront actually it's like trying to remember that the film is going to be seen by people and it's about their experience of the film throughout not necessarily you know the director's experience which is also valid <laughs> but it's like how do you translate that into into something that the audience is going to have an emotional connection to and to hopefully take away something from by the end of the film so I think I spent a lot of time um crafting actors performances I spent a lot of time when I, when I started out uh, doing a lot of sort of pretty amateur short films, which is really actually a really great experience because I spent a lot. I, it forced me to have to learn how to how to get the best out of something, how to craft something that was kind of mediocre for being maybe slightly better. And and so yeah, it's a lot a lot of sort of trying to improve performances. I think you know, I've learned a lot about performance and what you know, what is a good performance, what isn't a good performance, and I've got good good instinct I think now about that. Um, and so much of it is about not just when the actor's acting, but also reacting and responding to the other person. Like I think you can tell a, a bad performance when the actor, you can, in between their lines, they just kind of switch off and they're just waiting to say their next line. I think what's really interesting is when you get those actors who are bouncing off of the other person is, is, you know, is giving them and, and uh, you know, all those, all those reactions and looks and moments that aren't the actual line itself, I think is so interesting and sort of makes for a good film. Thank you for listening to Shorthand. This marks the end of the series, so if you've tuned in every week, thank you for coming with us on this journey. If it's your first time, please do check out our previous episodes wherever you get your podcasts. And feel free to get in touch with us on social media at Network FHSC on Twitter and BFI Network FHSC on Instagram to let us know what you thought or ask any questions about the BFI Network Short Film Fund. Shorthand is a BFI Network and Film Hub Southeast podcast produced by Nicole Davis with support from the BFI Network and ICO team. Special thanks to our editor Graciela Mechico and Epidemic for the music.